Right now, I'm shooting on a really, really cool camera that costs $999 for the body only, and what you're seeing me shoot this on is the kit lens, which costs $300, and I think this looks pretty incredible. So I'm gonna share everything that I love about this camera, as well as a few things that I don't like about this camera. It's all coming up. You gotta just press record. Hey guys, I'm Noel Molt with Think Media, and today's camera that we're talking about is the Fuji XS10. Now this is a camera that came out within the last year, and it's a really important impressive camera. Now the last Fuji camera that I used was the X-T200 and this is a major upgrade. It costs a little bit extra but it's a huge upgrade over that camera. I wasn't so stoked about that camera but this camera I'm really really excited about. I think my favorite thing about this camera is the colors that you get right out of camera. Now right now the footage that you're looking at is straight out of camera. I'll leave this completely ungraded so that you can see exactly what it looks like straight out of camera. Now you can upload this straight to YouTube without color correcting, without color grading it's gonna look really good my settings that I decided to use are an automatic white balance and then I'm using the film simulation Astia soft I've turned the color down too because I noticed it was a bit saturated I've also turned the shadows down too and the highlights down too and the sharpness all the way down at negative four I'm shooting this in 4k and honestly I just love the image that I'm getting straight out of this camera now if you're like me I used to shoot on Canon camera so I have a bunch of Canon lenses and what's really cool about this camera when you go over to a Fuji system there is this pretty affordable adapter it's called the fringer adapter and I'm gonna have it linked in the description down below but this thing costs $350 and you're gonna be able to use your Canon lenses on this camera and you're gonna have all the functionality all the autofocus everything like it was a Canon camera but using your Canon lenses on a Fuji camera so with the adapter now on my wide angle Canon lens I'm gonna throw this on the Fujifilm XS10 and see what it looks like and how the auto focuses on this camera. All right, now I'm switched over to my Canon lens. And so we're at 10 millimeters, which is pretty wide. We were shooting on 15 millimeters using this kit lens that I got for $300. That is really the lens that I would recommend. If you have zero lenses, get this kit lens. It's a 15 to 45 millimeter lens. You're able to be wide so you can do the vlogging style, but you can also zoom in and get some really cool shots with that lens at a very affordable price. It's sharp, the autofocus is great. And now what you're seeing is a wide angle Canon lens. And this is pretty cool because I can go in and we got that eye tracking autofocus. And as I go out, it's gonna keep me in focus. Now, when you first start shopping for a YouTube camera, there are so many things that you want your camera to be able to do. But some of the most important things are autofocus, a flip out screen and the color. And I think this camera really does those three things really well. The flip out screen is beautiful. It's big, it's vibrant. And then the autofocus has been pretty great for me. I would say that it's not as good as something like the Sony a6100 lineup, a6400, a6600. Those cameras, it's not as good as the 90D, the Canon 90D or the Canon M50, but I would say that it competes with those cameras and falls just below. When you're doing vlogging stuff like this or you're sitting down in front of the camera, the autofocus is great. Like I said, the eye tracking autofocus really does a great job. And so out of the gate, I really think this is a contender for the best camera for YouTube, especially around that thousand dollar mark. Now there are some things I don't like about this camera as well as a lot more things that I love about this camera. So stay tuned for that because we're gonna talk about that now. Now on this camera, you are able to shoot in F-Log. What that means is it's a flat color profile. So when you throw that in your editor, it looks really bad. You have to add a lot of contrast and saturation and color to the image. But it's a great option for videographers and filmmakers because they can get the most color data out of that image so they can mess around with the color, mess around with the shadows and the highlights. But a really cool hack that I found on this camera, especially for us YouTubers who just wanna shoot stuff and upload it right away without messing with a bunch of colors and honestly, this is gonna save you so much time, is messing with the dynamic range options. When you open up your camera, your dynamic range is gonna be set to 100%, but if you increase this to 400%, this is going to give you the most dynamic range possible. Now, the only thing here is that your ISO is going to start at 640 rather than 160, which is what it usually starts at. The reason it does this is that the shadows and the midtones are gonna start at a higher ISO, boosting those up more while it keeps the highlights at a low ISO. ISO. So when you're at 640, which is the base ISO, when your dynamic range is at 400%, you can imagine that your shadows and your midtones are boosted up really high, but preserving those highlights at the lowest ISO range possible. This might sound really confusing, so let me just show you some before and afters so you can see exactly what this is doing to your image. 
So right now I'm outside, it's very bright and the sun is to my back so there's a lot of shadows on my face and then that sky behind me is really bright. But it does a good job of keeping the color in the sky that's super bright back there as well as some of this detail in the shadows on my face. Now we're gonna switch over to dynamic range 100% and look at the difference. What we should see is that the blacks are gonna be more crushed and the highlights are gonna be a bit more blown out. So let's switch over to that right now. All right, so I've switched the dynamic range to 100% and now we can see that the color is still in the sky but my face is a bit harder to see it's a bit crushed more a bit darker a bit more contrasty so I definitely recommend keeping that dynamic range to 400% and you are gonna get a much better much uh, cinematic professional looking image out of this camera Now everything that I've shot on this camera so far has been in 4K, but you can also shoot in 1080 HD, of course 24, 30 frames per second, but you can also shoot in 120 frames per second. You can also shoot 240 frames per second in slow motion, which is crazy slow. Another thing to know about this camera is that when I was shooting outside, I did get a symbol on the screen letting me know that the camera was starting to get a bit hot. Now, if it gets too hot, the camera will actually not allow you to record. And that's a big issue, especially if you are a vlogger or YouTuber, you really can't afford that. And so that's one of the things that I don't like about this camera is that if you are pushing it and you're shooting in high frame rates and you're shooting in heat, I mean, it is 95 degrees out here in Arizona right now. So it is hot and I was out in the sun shooting video, but you definitely do not want this thing overheating when you need it at the perfect moment. You always want to be able to hit record. So that is something to note with this camera is that you do have to be a bit careful and watch that so that you do not run into any issues. Now, if you're shooting stuff inside, you're going to run into no issues. I was filming for maybe 20, 25 minutes straight a YouTube video using this camera and it worked fine. It didn't stop on me once. It did not overheat. I was shooting in 4k. So that is good that it can do that. But when you're outside in the heat, that is definitely something to watch for. All right, now I threw my kit lens back onto this camera and I wanted to talk about some of the lens options that you can get for the Fuji film cameras. Fuji does have their own lenses and they really are great, great quality, but they can get pretty expensive. For example, I did shoot this video that you're looking at right now on the 60 millimeter 1.4 lens. Now you get that wide angle, you get that beautiful background blur, but this lens costs a thousand dollars. And I know that is just not affordable. It's not going to cut it for most other people out there. Now, Luckily, Viltrox actually produces a lot of prime lenses that are really great with this camera and the autofocus works great. You get great images, you get that shallow depth of field and it is very, very affordable. Now you can get a Fujifilm 16 millimeter F 2.8 lens. That's gonna give you the wide angle, just like the 1.4 lens, but this one's not gonna give you as much of a blurry background, but it's $400 and you still do get a little bit of that bokeh in the background. So there definitely are some options that you can look at when it comes to these lenses. But like I said, the Kit lens really is a great starter kit for you if you're just looking to get started with this camera. Now, this lens right here is actually another expensive lens, but what you're looking at, uh, I completely shot on this lens the entire video. It's a 16 to 55 millimeter f 2.8 lens. Now, it was a great lens. It was sharp. The autofocus was fine. Again, the colors are amazing because I just love these Fujifilm colors. I think it actually might be my favorite colors that you can get in this price range. Uh, it just, I, I, I'm loving the colors out of this camera. But as far as this lens goes, it kind of let me down. When I would zoom in or zoom out, I'd get these weird clicks and exposure, would like brighten and then adjust or darken and then adjust. It was really, really weird because it's supposed to be an f2.8 constant aperture. I don't know if it's just my lens or what, but that was something that I noted about that lens. Now, I did have people asking if they should shoot an F-log, that flat profile, but my opinion is no. If you're doing YouTube content, shoot in the picture profile that I was telling you about, the Astia Soft Film Simulation. I really think you get beautiful color straight out of camera, then you don't have to mess with the color grading. When shooting an F-log, you also get 8-bit footage unless you record onto an external monitor, which is going to cost more money and just 
just adds to the whole thing and you don't want to do that. You want to use the monitor that you have on this camera and you want to record onto the SD cards into this camera. And so I don't recommend hooking up a whole nother monitor recording in 10 bit and it's just going to slow down your computer and you really don't need to unless you want to use this camera for professional gigs. If you're doing weddings or music videos, something like that, then yes, you probably want to do that and maybe invest in the money for that. But for us YouTubers, I don't recommend shooting in that 8 bit F log footage. I definitely just recommend shooting in that picture profile that I told you guys about. Now, Eterna is a really popular film simulation that people are shooting in because it's flat, but it's not as flat as F log. So you still are going to color grade the Eterna film simulation, but you do get more in your highlights. You do get some more details in the shadows as well. Now, real quick, I'm going to go through some of these film simulations so you guys can see what that looks like. And again, you can customize these inside the menu. So if you want to tweak with it, you can. Without further ado, check out these film simulations and then let me know in the comments which one do you guys prefer the most? Which one looks the most beautiful? Let me know down below. One really cool thing about this camera is that it has IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization. So the sensor kind of stabilizes itself while you're filming. Now this is great for vlogging just like this to help keep those jitters and shakes out of the camera. And so I like that it has this on this camera in this price range is really nice to have. Now I did some tests with the in-body image stabilization and I threw on my 30 millimeter 1.4 lens as well as using the digital image stabilization inside the camera. Now initially when I was looking at this footage, I thought it was awesome. I thought it looked great. It almost looked like I was on a gimbal when I was filming this stuff. But as I took a closer look and I started to look at the footage, there was some weird things happening in the bokeh behind Madeline. There was some weird things happening in the image. Basically what was happening is my camera footage was a bit shaky because it was completely handheld and I was just walking with this camera in my hands and it did a really good job stabilizing it, but you kind of get that warping effect that you would get if you were to stabilize it in Premiere Pro or stabilize it in Final Cut or whatever editing program you have. So after realizing this, I definitely recommend to turn the digital image stabilization in the camera off and then to just do it in your editing program. This way you actually have more control over it. So if you wanna dial it back, you can, or if you wanna increase it, you can still get that same look just in your editing program rather than just doing it on your camera and not being able to change it later. Now, one of the things that I don't love about this camera is the battery. It is a very small battery and it doesn't give you a whole lot of time to film on. Now, when shooting videos like this, where it's vlog style and you're turning the camera off and on, you get about an hour out of the battery on this camera when shooting in 4K. Now, when I was shooting a YouTube sit down video, I only got about 30 minutes with my battery inside this camera. So it's not the best battery, but you can just pick up multiple of them. And you also could carry around a USB charger and plug USB-C straight into the camera. And that's gonna charge your camera as well. Also, so if you are a live streamer, you can get a clean HDMI feed out of this camera so you can live stream using this camera. My issues though with doing that would be worrying about overheating as well as the battery life. You definitely need to get a dummy battery for this camera. Now I haven't tested it, but having a clean feed HDMI output is always good, especially if you need to live stream. So is this really the best camera for YouTube? Well, I think it is a contender and it definitely just depends on who you are. I think this gives you a really cool look, gives you great colors, and that's my favorite thing about this camera. The colors look better than the Sony camera, straight out of camera, in my opinion. And so I would definitely use this over a camera like that. However, you can get the Sony a6400 with a couple lenses for this camera with the kit lens. So it's really hard to say. I think this and the 6400 would both be great buys. I do like the image out of this camera better. It's a great camera with great colors. And I think with a few tweaks in the future, one of these cameras could end up being one of my favorite cameras to use for YouTube content creation. For now, I think there might be a better option out there, but this sure is dang close. Thank you.